Hello everyone and welcome to the other big clash of round 8 of this year's FIDE candidates tournament. It is Vidit Gujarati versus Gukesh. Vidit uh, coming off of a draw in the previous round but he did defeat Alireza two rounds ago and Gukesh coming off of a tough loss to uh, also Alireza Firuja. Uh, now they are facing each other. It's a, it's a really wonderful game. You guys will enjoy this one and uh, we, we can learn a lot from it as you'll see. I'm sorry I don't have a photo of the matchup for some reason. For this round FIDE has not updated uh, any of their... Uh, 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 web pages, or, or you know, uh, they didn't upload it on Twitter or on Facebook or anywhere, so I just don't have it. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have to uh, enjoy it without photos. So I, I, if they if they uh, upload it, I will show it in some of the other videos that I make. Uh, but yeah, let's check it out. The video with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. Going for the uh, Italian game. Sorry about that. Uh, and now knight to f6, the two knights defense. And there's always, um, you know, an intense moment here. We don't know whether or not, uh, you know, the, the player wielding the white pieces will go for knight to g5. Uh, but no, pawn to d3. The modern bishop's opening to the two knights defense. We have pawn to a6. And um, interestingly, bishop to e7 and bishop to c5 are the two most common moves here. Sometimes pawn to h6 is played, but a6 is like the 10th most popular continuation. For example, this, uh, everyone plays this. Uh, Magnus defeated, let's say, he defeated Vladimir Kramnik twice with black in this line. He even defeated Yanni Pomnishi in round 11 of their World Chess Championship match in Dubai uh, in 2021. So, yeah, it, this is a very serious opening, but a6 almost never played. It's extremely rare. Uh, castles and pawn to h6, and it is now already as of move 5 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, let's see how Vidit handles this new territory. Uh, pawn to a4, and already uh, after uh, after uh, Gukesh played this pawn to a6 move, uh, uh, Vidit took uh, 20 minutes just to castle. So you can see he's already down on, uh, on the clock, whereas Gukesh is... Uh, hasn't even spent a minute. Uh, pawn to a4, we have bishop to c5, and now bishop to e3, offering a trade of dark square bishops. Uh, d6, you could also trade, but it doesn't really do all that much. If anything, you help white advance d4 at some point, plus you give white the semi-open f file. So, yeah, not the best. So, d6, we have knight b to d2, castles and pawn to c3 now. We have rook to e8, uh, pawn to b4. Again, uh, quite a lot of time invested in this pawn to b4 pawn push, uh, 25 minutes. You can see Vidit is already below the one hour mark. Bishop captures on e3, f captures, and now bishop to e6, just offering a trade of light square bishops as well. And you definitely could consider something like this. Let's say you play queen c2, you connect the rooks, and then the uh, game continues, but uh, Vidit went for b5 right away, and this is uh, also kind of the story about uh, uh, about uh, this game, not just the, the, the this weird pawn to a6 move Gukesh found. Uh, in the opening, knight to b8, we have bishop captures, rook captures, and now queen to c2. Uh, knight b to d7, and now pawn to d4. And what's the idea behind pawn to d4? Well, you have the e4 pawn nicely defended, so you don't have to worry. And if uh, uh, e captures on d4, then e captures, you undouble your pawns, and you have a beautiful pawn center here. Now, another thing is, uh, if you, let's say, play queen e7, you want to uh, develop the queen, connect the rooks, you trap your rook on e6. Now d5 just traps the rook. So that's why Gukesh plays this odd looking queen to e8 move. He develops uh, uh, the rook cannot come into the game and also he's threatening e captures on d4 because then he will have a triple attack on that pawn on e4. And uh, Vidit should definitely consider uh, pawn to d5 here. He should definitely consider it and then pawn to c4 and the game continues. However, he does something that in my opinion uh, makes it uh, incredibly difficult for him to play the game. He plays rook a to e1. Point being that now if Gukesh captures, the e4 pawn will be sufficiently defended, but he gives up control over the a file. And look at how Gukesh handles this. A captures, a captures, rook to a5. Okay, puts pressure on the pawn, but really just making room for the queen to double up on the a file. Pawn to c4 defending on b5 and queen to a8. And now Gukesh has full control over the a file. Uh, we have pawn to h3, creating some breathing room for the white king, uh, stopping knight g4, and also maybe preparing king to h2. Rook to e8. Now the idea is you will move the rook, you will move the queen somewhere, and then triple up on the a file. And this is... Uh, 
a position uh, where if you ask the engine uh, what's the evaluation, the engine will say, okay, maybe it's uh, plus 0 0.5 for black, but that you can play it. Now, I'm just going to show you what the engine wants to play here. Uh, to, to give you uh, uh, just an idea of how how impossible this is for a human to play. The engine says, okay, play C5. Okay, makes sense. Uh, let's say uh, captures, and now you grab the C4 square for your knight. You attack the rook. Okay, the rook moves with tempo, attacks the queen, the queen moves, and now queen to A4. Uh, just grabbing more space, preparing to uh, bring the other rook into the game. Maybe you can go rook to C2, put pressure on the knight, double up on the second rank. Many things are possible here. Now D captures on E5. You attack the knight. Now queen C2, offering a queen trade. Queen captures rook captures now wants to trade knights the f6 knight for the c4 knight let's say knight a3 attacks the rook rook c3 e captures and rook captures on a3 and now let's say rook d1 goes after the knight knight captures you kick away the knight knight comes to e4 and white wins the seventh rank let's say rook to c rook to d7 knight to g3 attacks the rook rook e1 and now let's say rook b3 pawns get traded off captures captures and this is what i mean that the position is perhaps playable uh, uh, what what the engine thinks that you should play. Black would be up a pawn, white would have a doubled e pawn, and you know it's a it's a fun position to play. But uh, yeah, it's very hard to to think like this. So uh, Vidit plays king to h2, and uh, uh, well, the engine just doesn't like this. The engine says that you should just bring the king back uh, already on the next move. Uh, and Gukesh plays pawn to b6. Now he opens up the attack of the queen on the e4 pawn, and uh, Vidit's queen is stuck here guarding the pawn. So rook f2, we have rook to a2, grabbing more space, attacking the queen, queen to d3, and now rook to a3. You could also play queen to a3, as a queen trade is favorable uh, for Gukesh, since all of these pawns are weak, and it's going to be hard to defend them, but he has a different plan. Rook a3, queen to b1, and now queen to a4, preparing to triple up on the on the a file. Knight to h4, with it going for that f5 square. Uh, rook to a8 and knight to f5, hoping to get this knight to e7 with a check and then to c6, but of course Gukesh stops that. Rook e to f1. Look at this. Vidit now has doubled rook on the f file and he has a knight on f5. This is, uh, I mean, this almost looks like a, like a sure victory for Vidit, but here comes rook to a1. Gukesh offers a queen trade. And probably you should just trade here. For example, captures, 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 and captures, and then hope for the best. But like I said, all of these pawns are weak. Uh, rook can come to e1, put pressure on, on the doubled e pawns. The c4 is weak. The, the d4 pawn, not, not really impressive. So very hard to even continue the game here. Probably something like g4, but white will be the one struggling to, uh, to ensure a draw. So after rook a1, Vidit uh, uh, agrees. He uh, plays queen to d3, keeps the queens on the board. Now queen to b4, preparing to bring the other rook into the game. Uh, we have rook captures on a1, rook captures on a1, and now you should probably just hold the position, play nothing uh, crazy. You should play maybe queen c2, maybe g4, uh, but Vidit went for pawn to c5 now. So the move that we've discussed uh, some 10 moves ago, Vidit plays it now, wants to bring the knight to c4, but Gukesh now doesn't mind at all. B captures on c5, knight c4, and queen to e1, and there is no more escaping for for, for uh, Vidit's king. Rook to e2 was played, attacking the queen, now queen to g1 with check. It's actually a forced mate in 11 here. I'm sure you guys see that without uh, any trouble. Queen to g8 check, king to g3, knight to h5 with check, king to h4, and now uh, the most precise way to play this, knight d to f6. Defends the knight, all of the squares are now covered in front of the white king, and a simple check will be checkmate. So that means g5 on the next move will be checkmate. So that it has to play knight, captures on h5, but Gukesh doesn't even uh, bother to take the knight. He just plays queen h2, wants to give queen g3 checkmate. And, uh, okay, knight to f5 defends the g3 pawn, but now rook to f1, threatening rook captures knight, and then queen to g3 checkmate upon removing the defender of the g3 square, g4, uh, but still rook captures on f5. There's nothing to be done here. E captures queen g3 check, king to g5, and knight h7 check. And it was in this position on move 38 that Vidit Gujarati resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. He is uh, getting checkmated on the next move. Only move is king captures on h5, and queen captures on h3 uh, will be checkmate with the knight covering the g5 square. Uh, so really, uh, uh, really an impressive game by Gukesh with the black pieces and... Uh, 
Well, uh, as far as I can sum this up, uh, the, the way I see this game uh, here, uh, pushing on the queen side was not the way to go for Vidit, and especially here uh, when he prepared this queen t8 move. Like, it looks like a move, you know, if you played it, you're like not sure if it works, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, uh, but it forces an elite player like Vidit to go rook a t1, and then the entire board just collapses uh, on top of him. Uh, yeah, like I said, just uh, keeping the tension with d5, c4, definitely the way to go, but after rook a1 and allowing Lukesh to grab hold of the a file, uh, it was uh, everything downhill for Vidit from, from there. And, you know, the queen comes to a8, the rook even comes to e8, to the a8, I mean, everything just uh, flows very, very naturally here. And, I mean, for a player like Lukesh, uh, he will not be missing that. So, in your own games, if you, you know, have an idea, let's, yeah, let's move the rook away from the file that potentially can open up on the next move. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, and here are the standings uh, for those of you who maybe haven't seen my previous video. And now, uh, uh, Gukesh, uh, by winning this game against Vidit, has caught up to Jan and co-leads the tournament. Jan was unable to uh, defeat Nijat Abasov. And uh, interestingly, Jan already played two times against Nijat, and both times he only drew against him. And Nijat is the lowest seed of the tournament, so everyone is really working hard to defeat him. Jan was even very, very sad in the interview after the game. He said that uh, should have been more cunning uh, going for some forcing lines uh, by not going for some forcing lines. And uh, yeah, if you look at it that way, Jan already faced with it. Uh, 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 Nijat twice, uh, Gukesh only faced him once, he still uh, has to face him one, but even that, uh, that time that Gukesh faced him, the game was a draw. So Nijat, okay, he did lose a couple of games, but he, uh, against the, the leaders of the tournament, he's just playing very well. Uh, but yeah, if you really want to uh, nitpick, uh, uh, since Nepo already played him twice, that means that for the rest of the tournament, uh, Nepo will have tougher opponents than Gukesh will, as Gukesh will still face Nijat once, uh, and of course will push like for eight hours to, to you know draw every every drop of water from from every stone until he he breaks him uh, if he if he wants to to win this tournament so Gukesh even though they're tied now uh, both, both players on five points uh, I uh, Gukesh uh, has a better chance of winning the candidates now as he he has yet to play Nijat uh, at least in my opinion uh, and the other standings okay Hikaru and Prague on four and a half of course still contenders to win the candidates uh, should uh, Jan or Gukesh slip in one game uh, Hikaru and Prague could easily overtake them even Fabian four points who is uh, trailing by a full point could still by by uh, you know if he wins a game or two uh just uh, come back for Vidit it's going to be a little bit harder and for Alireza and Nijat I think uh, the, 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 the there is zero chance for them okay maybe it's not zero if they win like all all the games uh, that uh, that are to follow but unless that happens yeah it's pretty much uh, almost zero uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Never abandon uh, the open file or a file soon to be open. Bad things will happen as they did in this game for Vidit. Uh, I would like to thank MPU Consulting, Shai Gross, Geoffrey Cook, uh, Jacob Gonzalez, and Ashish Yole for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the candidates tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and do try out improve first link in the description below uh, let us know what you think see you soon